WQEX Channel 16, Pittsburgh. We'd like to thank our partners who have helped to pay for this program, our members, and Blue Cross of Western Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania Blue Shield are pleased to support AgeWise in the interest of better health for area seniors. And by the Port Authority of Allegheny County. Thousands of seniors like you use a senior citizen pass to ride PAT buses and the T for free transportation to stores, doctors, church, friends' homes, and a more enjoyable life. And by St. Margaret Memorial Hospital, enriching the lives of seniors and their families. If you're older, you're in capable hands at St. Margaret. Hearing loss is a normal part of aging, but tonight on AgeWise Weekly, we'll tell you about the treatments for hearing loss, and we'll tell you if you can prevent hearing loss. I'm Eleanor Shano, inviting you to stay with us because AgeWise Weekly is next. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Age Wise Weekly. I am Eleanor Shino. I hope you're nice and warm and comfortable, and uh, you'll stay with us for the next half hour because we're going to discuss a problem that I feel rather confident that you or someone in your family suffers from, and that's hearing impairment. You know, four million Americans wear hearing aids, and there are another 20 million people who are missing a lot of the joys and sounds of life because they're hearing impaired and they haven't gotten any help. And the problem seems to be mm -hmm. most common among older adults. So tonight, we're going to shed some light on the problem and we're going to get some answers to your questions and concerns about hearing loss with our guest. I'd like you to meet now Dr. Stephen Lorenz from St. Margaret's Hospital. Dr. Lorenz, welcome. Uh, you are an ear, nose, and throat physician. That's correct. Okay. Let's define hearing loss. It's a very subjective thing. I might think I hear just fine, but folks around me may say she has a problem. Well, that's, that's common. Uh, a lot of times people don't realize that uh, they have a hearing loss, but the loved ones around them uh, understand that they're just missing out on a lot of things. Well, then how do, you, how do you find out if you have a hearing loss? You have to have a test, right? Yes, you have to be examined and you have to have a hearing test, yes. Are there any little social uh, clues that you might have if someone keeps saying, will you repeat that? Uh, I, I didn't hear you, I didn't catch what you said. Excuse me, pardon excuse me. me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Enough excuse me's in the house and in they Europe. take you by the ear to the doctor, they right? bring you right in. <laughs> Why is it that uh, one in four people over the age of 65 are hearing impaired? Does this mean that if we live long enough we're all going to lose our hearing? Yes. Oh, thanks for the good news. Sorry, but you're not <laughs> going to go deaf, you're just going to have some impairment of hearing. And that doesn't mean that everyone's going to be wearing a hearing aid. It means that a large percentage is, uh, will be uh, hearing impaired enough to benefit from a hearing aid. It seems to me that more men than women suffer hearing loss. Is this true? Well, according to the women that bring their men into my office, yes. Uh, it might be a, a combination of uh, noise exposure, work exposure, and uh, the natural aging process. What causes most hearing loss? Far and away, in different age groups, it's different etiologies, but far and away, it's, it's just the natural aging process. It's called presbycusis. Uh, following that, it would be uh, noise exposure. And there are other types of hearing loss that are, can be caused by viruses, illnesses, medications, Things like are they that. all are, are they all permanent losses or are some of them temporary? What we're talking about right now is a nerve hearing loss or mm -hmm. sensory neural hearing So that's hearing called loss. nerve deaf, we've heard that term? Nerve deafness, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's permanent. All right. If you suspect that you have a hearing problem, where do you go? Do do you do you go to a, to a physician? Do you, or do you go to to a, one of these places that advertises on television or uh, in the yellow pages? Well, I would suggest that you go to a physician, an ear, nose, and throat physician, because sometimes it could be a simple thing like your 
your canal is plugged with uh, wax. Yeah, you, you told me you had a, a gentleman a few years ago who came and he thought he had a serious hearing problem and he went to, to Dr. Lorenz and what did you do? I just took uh, all the wax out of his ears and he hugged you he and could kissed hear you again. and he thought I was something <laughs> special. Our phone number is 622-1555. Our phone lines are wide open. If you have any questions about hearing loss, hearing impairment of any kind, just give us a call. Dr. Stephen Lorenz live here in the studio. Call our line five. You're on the air with Dr. Lorenz. I have a question for the doctor. Okay, I have a brother and I have a brother-in-law. and I have trouble for them. Trouble with them, they won't wear their hearing aids when they're supposed to. And I'd like to know what should I do? Well, sometimes the hearing aids aren't fitted correctly. Sometimes the hearing aids are given to people who won't necessarily benefit from uh, the use of a hearing aid. I would suggest that uh, you take the hearing aid and your brother and your brother-in-law to an ear, nose, and throat physician so that uh, they can evaluate uh, both the aid and the individual. And uh, perhaps there's uh, some problem with, with the aid. Uh, perhaps there's some problem with the hearing loss, uh, and maybe something can be done to help them. I'm sure, doctor, that there are, are literally thousands of people out there that have hearing aids that are in a drawer because they don't work well enough or maybe they, they weren't fit properly. They've spent good money. Is there any guarantee with a hearing aid? I mean, can you, can, when you go to a, an audiologist and have your hearing checked and you buy a hearing aid, what happens if it doesn't work? Well. Your, the business arrangements are different everywhere, but people should get their hearing aids at reputable places. Uh, I would go to an ear, nose, and throat doctor who dispenses hearing aids, or at least go to an ear, nose, and throat doctor who deals with a reputable audiologist who dispenses hearing aids. And I would go and I would get one a hearing aid from a person who would uh, give them a 30-day trial. Aha! Uh -huh. So you have you're fitted and you have it for 30 days, then if it doesn't work, you don't pay for it. You turn it back in. There's a prearranged number, uh, amount of dollars that you would pay, uh, $75, $100, to use that hearing aid, to, to go through the fitting, to use the hearing aid, uh, and to see if it works. And you have to be willing to cooperate during that 30-day period. I mean, you have to make sure that you can take it back to have it adjusted, adjusted. and you sure. make sure that you wear it. I mean, you're never going to get used to a hearing aid unless you wear it, just like a new right. pair of glasses. Call our line six. You're on the air with I Dr. Lorenz. <laughs> Hi. Are you there? Yes. Go ahead. Yes, I have uh, ringing in my ears uh, mm -hmm. constantly. Uh, sort of a high pitch. I was wondering if there's anything that can be done surgically or uh, do I have to have a hearing aid? And I noticed I'm going, huh? What did you say? <laughs> oh, that must be maddening. Yeah. Well, hearing loss and ringing in the ears or tinnitus uh, go hand in hand. So uh, undoubtedly you do have a little bit of a hearing loss and the, the ringing or tinnitus is, is, the, is uh, because of that. There's no medicine for the tinnitus. There's really no surgery for the tinnitus. Uh, oftentimes, uh, I suggest to patients that if the tinnitus is bothering them or the ringing is bothering them, they use uh, soft background music. Uh, for example, if the, if the ringing is bothering them so much they can't fall asleep. So you turn on a little radio, soft music, and, uh, and Doctor, fall that, that's a permanent condition? And for the it's rest of your life, you're going to have ringing in your ears? Well, it seems to come and go, but what happens is the ear gets used to the ringing, and then you lose a little bit more hearing a few years later, and then the ringing quality changes, so your ear picks it back up again. We're talking with Dr. Stephen Lorenz, and we're discussing hearing loss, uh, hearing problems of any kind. Our phone number is 622-1555. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back to answer your calls. When you need to breathe new life into the old homestead, join us Wednesday night. Steve Thomas and Norm Abram walk through the bathrooms, bedrooms, and breezeways of people they hardly know on this old house. Their mission? Turn Hell House into House Beautiful. Then it's Dean Johnson and Robin Hartle in Home Time. Don't let those yuppie looks fool you. They're packing power tools and the know-how to help you do it yourself. Wednesday night, join us for This Old House at 8.30, followed by Home Time at 9. 
Underwritten on WQEX by Energy Reduction and Cassidy Pierce. Welcome back to HYS Weekly. I'm Eleanor Shano. My guest, Dr. Stephen Lorenz from St. Margaret's Hospital. Dr. Lorenz is an ear, nose, and throat specialist, and we're talking about hearing loss, and we're taking your questions. We have a caller, line seven. You're on the air. Yes, doctor. I developed vertigo about two weeks ago, and I just wonder would that have any effect? Uh, it's it's terrible. It's a dizziness, and they took me to the hospital and gave me meclizine to take. And since then, I haven't been able to get to my own doctor, but I wondered, is there any special steps I can take to relieve me of this condition? It's a lot, uh, it's gone away quite a bit, but I'm still a little leery when I stand up. Well, vertigo is a very, very uh, multifaceted problem. And you should see an ear, nose, and throat specialist if you didn't at the hospital. Uh, to diagnose the cause of it and to give you treatment. Uh, you is can it an infection, doctor? What is it? it, it uh, I've, I've had it. it. It's probably the worst thing I, I, I can recall because you, you cannot move. I mean, you are absolutely flat on your back, and, and it, it's, it's terrible. Fortunately, mine only lasted a couple of days. Well, uh, some are caused by infections, viral infections. Mm -hmm. Uh, some are caused by things we don't even know yet. I mean, years is. Is there one any of medication? Uh, just to cover up the symptoms, basically, uh, meclizine is one. Uh, the water pills are another uh, uh, means. Uh, dietary changes: no salt, nicotine, caffeine, or alcohol. Do you see any permanent damage to the hearing following an episode of vertigo? Usually not, if it's a if it's a standard case. But during the bout, yes, the hearing fluctuates sure. and decreases. Well, I can I can sympathize with the caller. I, I know how you feel, and and for several days after you've had that episode, you just you want to move very slowly. You're just afraid it's going to yes. come back. Caller line six, you're on the air with Dr. Lorenz. Hello, thank you. Um, I was wondering if you could give me some insight as to how you get a person to agree or admit to the fact that they have a hearing loss <laughs> and how, you know, how you could get someone to, I know this person knows they can't hear well because they shout all through the house and turn TV up and, but how do you get a person to really commit, you know, to say, yes, I think I want to get something done and is something like this covered by hospital insurance? Uh, I'll answer the first question. Is, is it's a tough good luck. question. Great. Good luck. Oh, it's a tough question. Uh, you can lead a horse to water. Uh, but uh, You said you see so many patients yes. who are literally pulled in by their ear yes. by a spouse, right? Right. right. Uh, a lot of people won't admit it. Uh, if they have a, a vision problem, they'll go get a pair of glasses like that. But if they have a hearing problem, they, they hesitate to go in and get it checked and possibly wear a hearing aid. Uh, to answer the, uh, the second question, uh, most insurances do not cover hearing aid. There are a few that do, but most do not. Uh, specifically, Medicare does not. Uh, most of the uh, commercial insurances do not, unless it's a special arrangement with the corporation. Dr. Lorenz, uh, you know, hearing loss uh, can create a lot, of, a lot of social problems. It can create yes. problems within the home and, and uh, out. I mean, you, so many people that suffer hearing loss, and I'm sure you hear this all the time, they say, I can hear just fine. I can hear everyone else, I just can't hear you, or I'm fine as long as there's just one person speaking, or it's the background noise. I mean, you've heard all of those. All of these. The, all of those excuses. Mm -hmm. So I suppose it, uh, with the caller that, that, that just called before about the person in her home, what do you see? Do you see that it's just finally the person has to admit themselves that they have a problem? Yes. They have to want to hear better. Okay. Caller, line five, you're on the air. I wanted to ask him if uh, hearing loss can be hereditary. My father and his mother were stone deaf, 
I am. I have a little bit of a hearing loss myself, I, but neither one of them would ever wear a hearing aid. I have one. It depends on where I am. Some places I can hear real good, and other places I have to use the hearing aid. I, I carry it in my purse. It's my, uh, in case I go somewhere where I know I'm going to have some trouble. Does that sound right? Well, yes. Uh, your first question, uh, it is hereditary. It can be. And as far as your, your uh, second question regarding your hearing aid, <clears throat> I would suggest you use your hearing aid more so that you can get used to it. And if, if you have to use your hearing aid only in certain circumstances, either the hearing aid wasn't fit, fitted correctly or, or you're just not using it, uh, and I would suggest you use it more. Uh, and if you're still having trouble, then take it back to where you got it, get it adjusted, and work with it. Can all hearing loss be corrected with a hearing aid? No. Okay. I'm sure that a lot of people are led to believe that their problem can be corrected by an overzealous hearing aid salesman. That's correct. We see, oh, how many patients a week that we tell them that a hearing aid will not help them. Okay. Again, a good reason why if you have a hearing problem, you really need to see a physician first. Caller, line seven, you're on the air with Dr. Stephen Lorenz. Are there any medications that tend to give you ringing in the ear, and is there anything we should know about taking these medications? Yes, there are a lot of medications that cause tinnitus. Uh, the most common one would be um, aspirin or aspirin-containing compounds, analgesics that people use for arthritis, certain water pills, certain high blood pressure pills. Uh, the very strong antibiotics called aminoglycosides, but uh, if you need those, then you need them to stay alive, and you'll take the ringing. So that, that's one of the side effects, right? Yes, there, there's a whole list. Anything with aspirin in it also. Uh, there's a, a lot of medications out there that have aspirin in that you don't even know that there's aspirin mm -hmm. in there. Caller, line eight, you're on the air with the doctor. Yes, uh, I wear a hearing aid, and uh, I got it through Eye and Ear Hospital, but my problem is, now, if I'm talking directly to a person, I don't have any problems. But if I'm sitting around, like, in a circle with people that, uh, and or even at church, all these other sounds come in, and I just can't distinguish what, something, what someone's saying to me, and it's embarrassing. Is there any way that uh, I can correct this, you know, is there any way of correcting something like that? How old is your hearing aid? It's two years old. Well, it probably has some of the more modern circuitry in it, but there are, there are circuits now that they can add to hearing aids to decrease background noise, and I think you ought to uh, uh, try to bring that up to the people there at Eye and Ear and, uh, uh, if they haven't already instituted that. Sometimes there is no good answer. These circuits uh, are only so good, uh, and um, the background noise may still bother you. Okay, caller line six, you're on the air. And doctor, I have a question. I have peripheral loss similar to the person that was just speaking. And uh, about 15 months ago, uh, I went and tried a, for 30 days a, uh, uh, two hearing aids. And, and uh, they did not do the, the work for me. And uh, the audiologist told me that um, maybe that he couldn't do anything right now, that to check with them in a year or so, maybe there'd be more advanced uh, uh, equipment out. And uh, I can hear well, as the other person said, one-on-one -on, -one on the mm -hmm. telephone. I'm a businessman. I can hear in a small group meeting. But when I go into a theater with air conditioning or, or uh, uh, heating, uh, you know, background noise, if I'm in, a, in a, a restaurant that has a tin roof and a wooden floor, <laughs> I think I'm in the middle of the River City Brass Band. <laughs> and and uh, I, I, um, I just um, wondered whether you just mentioned some changes. I uh, just wondered whether... Uh, it's uh, time to go back if there's anything that would be helpful because I, the other thing I want to say and then I'll let it go. Uh, a couple of years ago when I started thinking about this and realized I had this problem, uh, they had some direct uh, commercial uh, on television. Now, you know, yeah, my, I, used to, couldn't, I couldn't hear in a, in a saloon and now I can hear everything. It's just fine. All the background noises are gone. And uh, I think that's a bunch of bunk. Okay. Well, I agree. Uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done to control the background noise. Uh, whether or not it's time for you to go back in for a, uh, another try at it, I don't know. Uh, 
I would hope that you go to a reputable person and uh, let them work with you and you work with them. But in all honesty, all these new circuits, uh, nothing is perfect yet and you're going to have trouble. Is 30 days long enough to try two hearing aids? Is that a, a good enough trial period? I would think so if you use it for the 30 days. Every day, okay. Yes. Okay. It's not going and to work. And under a lot of different circumstances. Sure, you use it. You just put them in. I think the caller talking about using it in the movies, that's a, that's a really good time to try out your hearing aid because you're, you're sitting there and for an hour and a half, two hours or more, yeah, that would give you a, a good opportunity to really get used to a hearing aid, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Uh, there's not a lot of noise unless the people react to the, what's right. on the screen, right. of course. Right. Okay, we're going to take another short break, and we'll be right back with Dr. Stephen Lorenz talking about your hearing problem, 622-1555. HWISE Weekly continues right after this. Hi, I'm Mary Lou Metzger, your host this week on The Lawrence Welk Show. Here are some highlights. Swami, how I love you, how I love you, my dear old Swami. Shine, little glowworm, glimmer, glimmer. Shine, little glowworm, glimmer, glimmer. Saturday at 7, underwritten on W2EX by Canterbury Place. Welcome back to HWISE Weekly. I'm Eleanor Shano. My guest tonight, Dr. Stephen Lorenz, and we're talking about hearing loss. And Dr. Lorenz, the, the last caller, just uh, talked about going to an audiologist and having the audiologist say, hey, check back in a year. Is there something new on, on the horizon, something that, that might offer some hope to, to, to people that, uh, you know, have this problem, especially with back background noise? They're working on it, but uh, as I said, it's not perfect, and there, there is always something new. Okay, okay. Uh, Be patient, huh? Yes. Caller, line eight, you're on the air. Caller, line eight, are you out there? Am I on the air now? Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, doctor, I've had a, a Meniere's problem for many years, and it's resulted in a gradual hearing loss right. on my left ear. And recently, an audiologist uh, tested me and said the uh, left ear. Uh, I only had about a 15% hearing, but the right ear had up to 65%. Uh, prior to this, I've always been advised not to try a hearing aid because of this Meniere's problem. Uh, however, uh, the, currently they're suggesting that I could get some relief by having a hearing aid in my right ear. Do you have any comments on that, or is there anything new in treating the Meniere's problem? Well, Meniere's is a whole new area of, uh, that, we're, that we're talking about, except that with it, you do get the gradual hearing loss that you, you have. Uh, Meniere's is usually involving only one ear. So, yes, the hearing loss you have in the other ear, the right ear, is not as bad as, as the left ear. I would assume that you have the Meniere's in the left ear. And a hearing aid uh, trial for the right ear might be indicated. I would suggest that you go ahead and, uh, and do that. With regard to treatment of Meniere's, uh, there are a lot of treatments, and that means there's not one good treatment. And uh, you, you have to go through the treatments and find out which one works for you. It's a chronic condition, right? It's a chronic recurring problem, yes. Caller, line five, you're on the air. Uh, yes, Dr. Lawrence. Uh, I want to ask you, have you ever heard of Sjogren syndrome? Yes, ma'am, I have. Okay. Uh, that causes me to have dry eyes, yes. dry mouth, dry nose. I also have rhinitis, which gives me sneezing attacks. I have Meniere disease in my right ear. You were just talking about it a second ago. And I've also lost 40% of my hearing in my left ear. Will I eventually have to wear... Uh, get used to a hearing aid. Well, are you having trouble hearing now? Um, yes, I, especially when people talk in a lower voice. I have hard, uh, uh, difficult to understand. Also, I get buzzing very, very more often than a tooting like. Yes, uh, it would sound like you might be a candidate for at least an evaluation and, and an otologic and an, an audiologic evaluation. 
I would get a hearing test. I would see an ear, nose, and throat doctor. I don't think your Meniere's or your hearing problem has anything to do with your Sjogren's and vice versa. Okay, caller, line eight, you're on the air. Hello? Hi, go ahead. Oh, hi, I have a question for you. What about miracle ear, hearing aid? That one of the, I guess that that's just one of the many that are advertised on television, and I, I'm I, I'm sure that they get a lot of attention from a lot of people with with hearing problems. Doctor, the most honest answer you can give us. Well, it's a commercial uh, enterprise, and it's it, they're there to sell hearing aids. And I've heard so many stories uh, uh, from my patients about them. Uh, some people are happy with them. A lot of people aren't, uh, and. Would it be okay to, to pick up on what you said before? If you're going to buy a hearing aid such as one advertised on television, at least demand the 30-day yes. trial period so that if it doesn't work in 30 days, you have not lost your money. Now, if it is a reputable company, they're going to go they along should, with that. They should do that. That's okay. correct. They okay. should do that. Caller, line five, you're on the air. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Yes, uh, as a Meniere's patient, I'm aware that there appears to be limited information about that disease as to what causes it, what treatments are right for, what patients, etc. But really all I want to know is uh, whether it's inherited. Well, it's, it's thought to be not an inherited trait. Uh, however... We're down to less than a minute, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I can't answer that in a minute. Uh, Bluntly, no, it's not an inherited problem. It seems to be related to stress. The, the etiology of it still eludes us. And I'm sorry, I just can't answer your question on the air. Okay, we have so many questions, so many callers still on the line, Doctor. Uh, Dr. Stephen Lorenz, St. Margaret's Hospital. Doctor, you do offer evaluations at the hospital, right? Yes, and in our office, yes. All right, fine. So uh, you can call St. Margaret's Hospital. Uh, you can make an appointment, get an evaluation, get some of the questions answered. And uh, if there's one message we want to leave our viewers with tonight, if you have a hearing loss, go to a physician. Have it checked out first and uh, make sure that it's uh, nothing, you know, too serious, and then take it from there. You can call St. Margaret's Hospital for some more information. I'm Eleanor Shano reminding you that I'll be here next Wednesday night. Remember, the good years start right here. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.